Jeremy Corbyn has said he'll call a vote of no confidence and urged the leaders of the other opposition parties and Tory rebels to install him as caretaker PM in order to stop a no-deal Brexit. Well, to discuss this more, I'm joined by Bronwyn Maddox, direct, director of the Institute for Government. And Bronwyn, we saw you in um, Tom's report earlier, but let's talk a little bit in a little bit more detail about the Corbyn plan. What is the likelihood of that succeeding? I think it's very tough to see it going very far. Not because there isn't support, and your um, your report was covering how some uh, MPs, the SNP uh, among others, and even some among the, the Tories, want the things that the Corbyn plan is trying to deliver, which is uh, an ability to take control of it, get an extension, uh, and get a general election um, within the period while we're still in the, uh, the EU, so voters can vote on that. But what many of those people don't want is putting Jeremy Corbyn into number 10. And it's uh, marvellously undefined the way he's uh, crafted this letter. Yeah, he says a time limited, but doesn't say what the limit on that time might be, doesn't say what powers he'd have or the others and so on. So I think there's a lot of um, uh, suspicion that others might have about, uh, about him. Um, where that takes us then is is what do those MPs who really want those objectives of, of, of an extension and um, while either the government, uh, they urge the government to get another deal or they push for a general election, what do they do? And we're beginning to hear an awful lot more uh, as people use these August days to try to go the other route, which as Joe Swinson, the Liberal leader, Lib Dem leader was saying, try to get hold of the parliamentary process to try to pass legislation and force the government to ask for an extension. So what, are they not on holiday or anything or talking to their constituents at all? They're in corners plotting? Pretty much, yes. Um, uh, down, <laughs> in, fact, in fact, Westminster is astonishingly full of people plotting uh, in offices, in cafes and so on, and indeed in Parliament. Uh, some of them must be on holiday, but it doesn't feel like it compared to normal. And they're plotting, what, the idea that we heard from Ian Blackford there, that you grab hold of the legislative uh, agenda in Parliament in early yeah. September? Yes. They're trying to get together the numbers that would support one of several ways of getting hold of the business of the Commons. Now, this is quite difficult to do, because the government, uh, in normality, controls the business of the, co of the Commons. And so they have to use one of several devices, for example, calling for an emergency debate, um, and then trying to bring, a, say, a private member's bill. But those things wouldn't normally be binding. And to turn these mechanisms into something binding on the government, or to give them the power to pass legislation, they're probably going to need not only the Speaker's support, but also to break with some conventions. So it would feel like quite a big quite a big thing to do. And what about the government then, while everybody else is plotting in corners? You know, what is the government doing? Are they just waiting to see whether these endeavours succeed or fail before they go back to the EU and say, we're approaching the cliff edge? Yeah, they're not on holiday either. So they are uh, certainly planning for no deal. They're running what feels uh, like an election grid, use the jargon. You know, we have a big week of justice announcements. Maybe there's one on a week of education announcements and so on coming. Uh, so big announcements with a lot of money behind that being announced. Um, they certainly intend to keep that going at least through the first half of, of September. But they've got their eyes on these, these parliamentary uh, procedures as well. Whether they turn round and say, uh, look, we're really, really trying uh, with the EU, um, but all this is just to strengthen our hand, I don't know, because the one area where there doesn't seem a lot of activity at the moment is actually negotiating with the EU. Doesn't sound as if you can afford a summer holiday this summer. Oh, people are not on holiday either. No. Sorry for you. Bronwyn, thank you.